everyone and welcome to stamp and chat live i'm gina from gina k designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world tonight we're going to have some fun because i'm going to make probably the most colorful card i ever made in my life i've got <laughs> i've got all kinds of ink pads everywhere I want to use as many layered flower stencils as I can and I want to mix and match them together to create almost like a garden feel for my card tonight. So that is my plan. We'll see how it goes and I'm very excited about it actually. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey Tom. Oh, so we're, uh, this is like the blend of the world coming? Yes. <laughs> It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited because I pulled out like all of our past layering stencils. I don't know which ones I'm going to use and how it's all going to fit together. But I think it's fun to try and mix and match products that you have in your stash. Yes. So. That's what I said. Yeah. Is that what you said? <laughs> That's what I was going to suggest tonight. <laughs> oh, good. Well, then we're on the same page. Hi, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> Tuesday Night. It's um, it's the after. What is what do we call it? The, the crafter, crafter dinner, dinner cra crowd. Yeah, the, the crafter craft dinner crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, glad you're with us. All right, and you know what I'm doing also, Tom? I'm making a five by seven card tonight because I have so many stencils and so many flowers, and people love the bigger size card. So okay. All right, and are you coming back with the word of the day later? I'll come back with the word of the day. All right, that sounds good. Let well, rip. let's get into it right away. But I do have one thing that I want to mention. I was talking to my friend Mindy Egan earlier today and yesterday. We've been talking and chatting quite a bit. And Mindy has created some beautiful color card combinations that she's posted on our in our Facebook group. And um, she was saying, I'm not really sure how, you know, to link a video on those uh posts and I told her about QR codes now a QR code you've seen them you may not know what they are but you've seen them they're the little boxes that look like a barcode -y kind of thing they're square though and they look like all computer gibberish well if you don't know how to use those they're really cool so if you decide to print any of the documents from our file section that have QR codes all you have to do, and you can even do this right on the camera, or right on, right on your computer screen, just take your smartphone, like your iPhone or your Samsung, whatever kind of phone you have, open the camera app and just shine it over that barcode and a link will drop down onto your phone and you can click the link and it'll take you to the video where those cards were made. So that's really fun. I hope that that helps explain it. If not, maybe sometime I will actually do a demo and show you how to do that. But I kind of need like, I need like three phones to do that demo. But just give it a try. Open your camera app on your phone and shine it on that square QR code and you'll see a little link. Don't worry, it's safe. Just click on the link and it'll take you right to the YouTube video. Okay, now, with that in mind, I want to show you the die set that I am using tonight. This is the Master Layouts 8 die set. And this is the one that was dedicated for 5 by 7 cards. Now, don't worry if you don't have this die set. I will measure this panel for you, so this way you can just cut it with your paper cutter. But I wanted you to know that we did have a specific die set that works for 5 by 7s this panel is four and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches and then there is also a plain rectangle die that goes together with it to give you the little shadow layer and then this whole panel fits perfectly onto a five by seven card giving you a nice border around the edge so 
I thought that might be kind of a, a fun thing to use tonight. And because I'm gonna be making a bright colorful card, I also wanna create a little border around the outside using the masking magic. So I'm gonna use the quarter inch masking magic strips and I wanted you to see that they are long enough even for our Master Layouts 8 die set so that you can use them for 5 by 7 cards too. So I'm going to get this all set up here. You can see what I'm doing is I'm peeling these strips off and I'm putting them right along the edge, right up to the very edge of the panel. And I did cut this one. You can see the little stitches here. It might be a little bright, but it's not going to stay that bright because we're going to be using a lot of ink. And you can see now I'm going to create an extra little border. And I love doing this because it does create an extra little border, but it doesn't add another panel of cardstock. So number one, it saves a little bit in cardstock. It also makes the card a little bit thinner and it, it doesn't weigh as much when you're trying to mail them. Okay, so I grabbed a bunch of stencils here. Let's see if I can find my remote so I can zoom out just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I grabbed a bunch of stencils here. One of them I grabbed was the Fancy Florals Layering Stencil Set. I also have the Tranquil Lotus. I have the new one from the kit, the Perfect Poppies. I can't pick them up here. It's the Perfect Poppies. I have Summer Bouquet. And I also have our Layered Carnation. So I don't know how these are all going to fit in here, but you know, we're going to see what we can come up with, okay? So I'm going to start with the Tranquil Lotus. And I do want you to know that we have a huge layered stencil order in. So if you've been trying to get some of these, they are on order and they are going to be in soon. So hang in there if you've been waiting. <clears throat> now there's two ways that I could do this. I could do it the card this way, you know, and bring some of the flowers in this way and around the top and down along the bottom, or I could do it this way. I was thinking for the greeting to use one of the die sets, either the Happy Birthday Trio, which is huge. I don't know that I want to use that. I think I'm going to use the Happy Birthday Quartet because this one is a little bit more airy and um, it's just a tad smaller. So I think I'm gonna use this and make this into a birthday card. So let's start right off the bat using, um, let's use the new Poppy stencil. So this is a three layered stencil and the colors I thought that would work really nicely because I want these to be very bright red. I thought I would use Coral Reef and then Red Velvet together. These are a good red combination when you don't want to add any orange to the mix. So I'm going to start with a red blending brush. And the thing about this is now normally all of these stencils will line up perfectly, right? So if you want, you could put a piece of cardstock in the misty and you could pop the stencils right up into the corner of the misty and then it would be very easy to line up. But for something like this, I'm gonna be doing a lot of twisting and turning so that I can get all the flowers to come in. So I am going to be moving the stencil around. So if you see me struggle a little bit to line them up, I mean, that's okay. You know, it takes a second or two longer to line them up. No big deal, right? Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with these and I'm gonna just bring them in in the corner right over here. So I'm gonna have like, like two and a half poppies, okay? Just like that. So the first one, it doesn't matter. I don't have to line anything up and I am gonna use the Coral Reef ink. So I'm gonna just hold that down. Now, because we're not going right up to the edge, if you're nervous, you're a little bit nervous about anything getting onto any other parts of the cardstock, you can always take a couple post-it notes like that and just block off any area that you're worried about. Okay, so we'll just have the poppies coming in off, to the, off the side here. So this is the coral reef. Oh, it's such a pretty color. It's not too orange. 
it's just a real kind of almost like a calypso red i love it okay so while i'm doing this somebody tell me what the inside color of a poppy is i i feel like it's black but i don't know that i want to do black and maybe it's red uh, yellow i would like to do yellow if that will work i'm hoping that that will work okay so that is my first layer all right so we've got that going on and you can see this is blocking off my border all right so i'm just going to make a pile of stencils that need to be cleaned i'm going to throw them all on on the side there now here's my layer two this is where i'm going to have to just finagle this a little bit so that it looks right and there we go now if you feel more comfortable you can use a little bit of pixie tape for this black okay black huh all right i just don't know if i you know it's weird for from you guys to hear me say i just don't know if i want black to be on the card there black with some yellow okay well maybe i'll do a little bit of yellow and we'll see maybe i'll add like a couple little dots of black with a pen or something we'll see how that goes so now i'm going to use the darker red which is the red velvet here and we're going to just go right oh, did i move that a little bit i have to see that one doesn't look as straight i almost did it let's see if i can just move it a tiny bit yeah see that's a little better there we go okay now we're going in with that darker red oh yeah and this is like red velvet is probably the truest red we have in our collection it doesn't have too much orange it doesn't have too much blue it is absolutely the red red of all reds okay when that's pretty together can you see that i'm gonna zoom in a little bit here <coughs> pardon me so you can see that that is a that's a nice color combination there i like that okay and now we're gonna move on to layer three which is the centers and of course you can see here that i've done some black but i feel like i need to put a little bit of yellow on here and then maybe i'll just dab a little black on there so of course yellow i didn't get let's get some yellow here's wild dandelion although you know what might be a better yellow i think sweet corn let's get sweet corn because I feel like it's just a little softer. If it's not, if it's not enough, we'll just we'll just add a little bit more. Now, where are my blending brushes? I need a tiny blending brush for this. I think I'll use this one, even though it has a little peach on it. I don't have any extra of the real tiny ones, and we sold out of those, but they have been reordered as well. So hopefully a lot of the reorder stuff comes in i don't have any information here about reorder stuff so that makes it a little difficult for me to to tell you what's going to happen but and the size of the card again is it's going to be a five by seven so this panel i did get a little black on there this panel because there was some left on my stencil because i don't clean my stencils um is four and a quarter i think let me let me measure it again i can't remember what i said at the beginning four and a quarter by six and a quarter so that's the size panel i might add a little black into there kind of like gray it up a little bit okay Ooh, i hear thunder do you hear thunder tom i'm hearing thunder <laughs> So hopefully we won't go out, we'll be fine, but I'm gonna add a little black in here. I am thunderstruck. Thunderstruck. Tom and I went to a concert. We haven't been to a concert in forever. And we saw Kansas. It was really fun. So that's just a little bit of black in there. I like the way that looks. See how I left a lot of the yellow, but I just gave a little black around the edge all right and now we're going to pick a green for the stems for this one 
So let's let's get the stems lined up. Here we go. Did I do those all backwards? No. Hmm. Oh, that's because this is the tranquil lotus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you gotta look at the names, I guess, right? Okay, so let's just add the stems right here. Oh, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really cool. I hope some of it gets in here. I think, a, mm, I don't know. We might miss out on a little of that, but we'll see. So I'll use a little jelly bean green for this one. And I am going to Let's see what's on here. That'll yes. work. Yes, Tammy, they did close with uh, Wayward Sun. They did. Yeah, that was the encore. And do you believe, can you believe that people left before the encore? Like, they were like, thank you and good night. You know they're going to do Carry On My Wayward Son. How could they not do that song? And people were like, well, we want to beat the parking rush. <laughs> and they left and they missed, like, the best moment. It was great. It was really fun. We've heard it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that one's not even going to do anything on there, but that's totally fine. I had to follow through, right? Okay, so now we've got our poppies on there. Let's get some tranquil lotuses. We'll get some lotuses on here with the tranquil lotus set. So this one, I definitely want to put some big flowers up in here like this. But I want to see where the stems are going to go because I want the stems to be out of the way so that I can put flowers in here. So I think I might not do this part of the stem. I might just do these two. We'll see. Okay, so let's get these flowers up here. It's kind of nice with the stencils. You can see right through them, you know, and you can see exactly what you're doing. So this, the color flowers that I did last time I used this card, I believe they were in the teal colors because I made a postcard that was really fun. But I think this time I'm going to go with the lilacs. Maybe Oh, no, I did the lilacs last time. I'll do the lilacs again. I really loved how that looked. And I know that lotus flowers are pink. Well, should I do pink? I'll do pink. I don't even know what color lotus flowers are. They're any color you want them to be, but let's go with the light and the medium carnation tonight. We'll try that. So I'm going to start with the light carnation. I want them to look different than my last lotus card. So we'll start with the light carnation. We'll get blue in there and purple. Don't worry. We'll definitely get blue and purple. Oh, so how's everybody doing tonight? It's great to see all of you. I do have to tell you that Tom and I are not going to have a video on Thursday. I'm so sorry. I, we hate to do that, but we have a business meeting that we have to go to. And... Um, I don't even have time this week to make a video. Normally I do. Normally I try to, but it has just been crazy. And of course we did go to see Kansas over the weekend, so kind of my bad. I didn't work over the weekend. Okay, look how pretty those are. Oh, aren't they pretty? Okay. So now we're going to do layer two. And again, this one, you know, might take a hot minute to line up. I'm just going to try to line one flower up. Just this one here. It is so much easier when you could just pop it in the corner, but that looks pretty good. I think that's going to look good. Okay. It's going to look better than horrible. And that is the standard. So 
we really apologize. We hate to miss. I hate to miss a video like so much. I can't even begin to tell you how much it bothers me when I don't make a video on Thursdays. <laughs> it really bugs me. <laughs> but we really appreciate uh, your patience with us. This is something we have to do and uh, it was the only day we could do it. Okay, so this is layer two. I still feel like it's a little bit wrong. Yeah, that feels a little better to me. Let's see how that goes. Okay, get in there with that darker pink. It was a very mature crowd at the concert. Yes, like really mature. And on our on our way out, there was like um, not what you would normally see on the floor of a rock concert. It was like you know ace bandages and <laughs> diabetic supplies and <laughs> insure empty bottles of insure. <laughs> that was just our seats. <laughs> uh. Okay. <laughs> So now we're going to add some stems over here, like this. And I'm actually going to block this off right here. I don't feel like I need this right here. So I'm going to block it off, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to get another Masking Magic strip, and I'm going to just block all this off here. This this and this right there okay that should do it and then i can just get these stems all right now for these stems i think i'm going to i'm going to do some fresh asparagus so it'll be in the same green family i didn't see that tom <laughs> darn it <laughs> I know it's always something funny or good, profound. Karen said, so instead of a rock concert, was it a rocker concert? <laughs> Very good. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> but you know what? It was really cool because, like, everybody knew the words and everybody was singing. It was really fun fun to see and it was fun to see how amazing they played i mean they were they were up there but they played and one of the guys was from the original band which was fun to see too okay now i know this looks weird here but this is on the masking magic so when we pull that up it will look kind of like it went off the card Alrighty, I'm going to save this in case I need to mask anything else off. Now, we've got our lotuses on there. Now, what about this? Let's see. These would be really pretty to put in here, down here, coming up. Let's see how they, they would fit in. Oh, I think they're going to fit in really nicely in here. It's nice because you can look right through the stencil and see if it's going to block anything. And I don't think it will. We might have a little bit up here, but I think I'll just mask that leaf off. Okay, so this is the fancy florals. So I'm gonna put those right down in here. Now I'm going to use some other colors now. I wanna do some purples and I wanna do some blues. So let's do purples down here. We'll go with the light lilac. Let me get a light lilac brush. I know I have one. This might be a very dark lilac brush, but I will clean it off. I have one brush for every color family, but then for these trios of ink, I have one for each of the trios too. Okay. So this is layer one. We're gonna do the light lilac on. Are these different stencil sets? Every one of these is a different floral stencil set. That's the goal tonight, is the mix and match of a bunch of different floral stencils. 
You don't have a next release date, do you? Um, we're, our goal is um, April 30th, but that's not confirmed yet. So if that's not it, you didn't hear that from me. So you got a little bit of time. <laughs> okay, so there's the first layer. Ooh, those are pretty. Now we'll get the second layer in there. Mm-hmm. That'll look good. And it's okay if like the flowers touch a little bit here and there. I mean, they would in real life, right? If they're all like flapping around in the wind in the garden. Yeah, I mean, why not grab all your stencils and make use of them? Ooh, Tom and I do a concert? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Tom? It would, it would be a sold-out house, probably a one-bedroom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A one-bedroom. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so we've got the light and the dark purple in there. Ooh, that is pretty. Okay, let's see what we can do with these stems now. We'll get the stems and leaves in here. And we can twist them a little bit. So they work to our advantage. Let's see, does that look right? Looks pretty good. Okay. Now for this one, I think I'm gonna block off a little bit of up here. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna be fancy. And I'm gonna just cut a little curve into the masking magic. You see how I just cut like a little curved piece? And I'm just going to change the shape of this a little bit just to make it a little bit of a smaller flower here. Just so that it doesn't overlap up there. And then I'm going to block this one off completely. I'm going to do it down here too. See how I have that little curved piece? I'm just going to curve it up like that so it doesn't overlap onto that flower. Now you don't have to be so precise if you don't want to, but if it bothers you that stuff is going to overlap and you don't want it to, then do what I just did. Now I think I'll use the spruces here because I think it would be fun to have some different greens. I was thinking about this card on my way to work today and I was kind of looking at all the greenery out there and I thought, you know, there are a lot of different greens going on. It doesn't all have to be exactly the same green. And that just makes it more colorful. So Susan wants to know, do either of your daughters sing or play an instrument? Did either of them gain your musical talents? Mm. They are musically talented, but they uh, chose to <laughs> to. Uh, they didn't want to stick with it. Use it elsewhere. Yeah. yeah, Rena was a kick butt drummer when she was younger. She could really play great drums. Like really young. Like really young, but real. She was very good. Um, but she chose swimming, so she just couldn't keep up with the drum lessons and the swimming at the same time so she chose swimming alicia plays piano she plays guitar she plays she played trombone she plays a lot of different instruments and a lot of it by ear and she sings um but not a lot of you know not a lot of love for taking it to that next level okay so there is our First layer of, of spruce. I always want to say sage. I really feel like I should have named this color sage. I'm going to have to come up with a sage, though. Okay, now this one. What is this one? Is this even the right stencil set? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Okay, here we go. So, what am I doing? Is this the right stencil set? I'm going to look... 
Oh yes, it is. These are the middle flowers. Sometimes you just gotta look and So you're seeing the dangers of working with multiple stencil sets. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to block off. Some of these areas with my masking magic. So again, I'm going to give this a curve curve cut like that and I'm going to just curve that right there and block that off should I, should I show you that closer I think I should yeah you're really going off road now I'm gonna show them up closer I'm gonna pull this off and then I'm gonna zoom in real tight just so that they can see Okay, so I'm going to zoom in tight on this one. So you see here how that is going to be on the red. I don't want it to. So I cut this little piece just like that. And I am blocking off the part that I don't want. See, I created a little curve. And then with what's left, I'm just covering up the rest of it. So mm -hmm. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Just let me show you. I'll just do that one. And Marie is asking, please fix the missing stem. Which which one is that? The missing stem. Is that the one underneath the stencil to the left up? It might be here. I'll have to look. I'll look. Okay, and then you see if I go in here like this with the dark spruce. I just want to show you what that well I'll, I'll take it off in a minute somebody wants me to fix the missing stem I'll have to look is that the uh, stem that should be is the, should there be a stem in the on the flower upper flower to the left cutting across the bottom of that maybe I'll look in a minute all right, so this, I just want to have a little bit in here. So once again, I want to cut it so that it's kind of curved. This is going to create a little curved area right there. And then I'm going to block off this other area. Now this is being very nitpicky. And you guys don't have to be so nitpicky if you don't want to. Christina says, wow, this is some intense stenciling or in stenciling, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so you can see I didn't quite go over, but I added that second color. Now, where is the second stem? What are we, what am I missing? Oh, in here maybe? Is that supposed to be there connected? I don't know. I have to, I have to look. Um, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, there's supposed to be some stemmage right there. Hmm. So if you do that, like that, you're gonna have a little stem right there. I think that's what she's talking about, but I'm not 100% sure. But I'll add it, why not? Let's just do it. How you blocked it off the first time. Yeah, I blocked it off the first time. Exactly. So we'll just get that fresh asparagus in there. That is not very dark fresh asparagus. I might not have even noticed that. But let's see if that's what... Is that what you're talking about right in there? It does make a difference. That's it. Okay, is that it? And this one doesn't extend down, does it? Um, this one? 
Yeah. Yeah, it, it comes down and then it connects right there. Okay, cool. To this one going up. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. All right, so now, whew! <laughs> now we're going to put something up in here. So I'm wondering about the carnations because this would be really pretty to have just this flower coming in. Or we could have a totally different style flower and we could use this one. This mm. is the summer bouquet. And this is kind of a, an interesting flower. We'll just do this top one. And we could do that in like oranges or yellow and orange. Just have a pop of yellow. Why don't we do that? Let's do a little pop of yellow. In fact, I'll use wild dandelion for that. And we'll do orange too. So we'll see how this goes. We'll do a little yellow. Right there. I feel like we need that little pop of yellow. And then we need this one. This is gonna be crazy. Is that the one we used? Yep, that's the one we used. Okay, so we need a little greenery in here, which I think it's gonna work out really nicely as long as I don't do this one. So let's, I love this. To me, this is this is a very, very fun kind of card to make. It's not a fast card, and a lot of my cards are super fast, you know, in and out. But this one, I feel like it takes a little bit of time to figure out how you want it to look, and it's fun. When you work with 5 by 7 do you feel like you're in a bigger room? I do. I feel like I have so much more space. I'm in a bigger craft room. Okay. I'll just tape that down. All right, I have to look and make sure I'm not going to do anything weird. I don't mind that that stem is there because that would just be the extension of another flower. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, the other greens, the the jelly bean again. I feel like that's that's needed here. Okay. I have to be careful down here. I might just put this right there so I don't mess it up. Okay. So, I might go with a little orange on this too, but I want to get all these greens in here. go and since we don't have a layer for this green I think what I'm gonna do is find the fresh asparagus I don't know where I put that just had it a second ago oh my goodness I lost it oh here it is I'm gonna get the fresh asparagus ink and that fresh asparagus blending brush and I'm just going to add a little bit of darker, like on the bottoms here of some of these petals, or greenery. Just to add that little bit of depth. I think that'll be pretty. Okay. <laughs> Now let's add a, just a touch of orange back into that flower. So we'll put this back on here. We'll just line it up again. And then I'm gonna get a tiny brush, one of these tiny brushes, and I'm gonna use some sweet mango just along the bottom of that. Cause I, I want orange in this card somewhere. I'm kind of running out of room. So we'll just add a little bit in here, just along the edge. Just 
to make that look a little warmer down there. Is that pretty? And then, I don't know if this will even show. So this would be the flower that would be part of that. So how about if we just take this brush, we add a little yellow in there, just to get a little more yellow in it and a little orange in it. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, so now before we're done with this and before we add our greeting to it, I would like to make sure that this border looks really good and crisp. And right now, if I don't do anything to this border, it's just going to look weird. It's just going to, like the flowers are just going to cut off, but you're not going to really understand why. So what I'd like to do is take a little bit of sea glass ink and add just a little bit of sea glass along the white areas so that we have a nice crisp line, if that makes sense. I think it does. Time to throw some shade. Throwing shade. <laughs> okay, so you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to add a little bit of that in here, just along the edge. And the blue is really pretty because it kind of has that sky feel to it. All right, Tom, while I'm working on this, how about your word of the day? You said you had one. <laughs> okay. So I don't think we shared this, this word. Um, but if I did, I apologize. I'll make up for it. Um, <laughs> but you were talking about adding little black dabs. Yes. Earlier on in yes. the card making process. And um, we call those black scents. <laughs> I love it. Right? <laughs> yes. Did we share that before? I don't think we did. I, I use black scents on every single card. Every, every card single is a little card. bit of a black accent. And Gina Kay's black scents. I love it. That is so funny. <laughs> Right back to the dead space. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now you can see I've added that little bit of blue all around the edge. And now everybody's like grown. <laughs> Not everybody. And now I'm going to peel the masking magic off and you're going to be able to see how that little bit of blue really makes a difference. See how crisp the white edge is there? And it really accents then that stitched edge too. So I don't know if you can see that, but isn't that pretty? It just, it kind of looks like a patterned paper. Tom, if I go up and I just take a little bit of the brightness off the camera, do you think that would help? I don't know, I thought it looked pretty good. Can they see it okay? Yeah. Everybody can see it? Just gonna try this and see if that helps a little bit. Did that help at all? Can you see it just a little bit better? Oh, all the stencils just fell. Because I want you to see the stitched edge in there too. Okay. I feel like we've got a lot more color on there now, so that will work. Alrighty, now, yes? Okay, good, 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 good. So now it's time to put this onto the, the black scent piece, right? And then we're gonna make our greeting. Okay, so let's put this on. Isn't this fun? I mean, it's it looks like, I don't know, it looks like pattern paper or something, like pretty pattern paper. And if you just wanna stick to a couple colors, you don't have to go as wild as I did, but I don't know, I'm feeling spring and I just want all the colors on my card right now. I'm going all the way around the perimeter. These bigger die cuts, they seem to need a little extra tape around the perimeter to get it to lay nice and flat. Okay. 
This is like every stencil in the world all coming together at once. Okay, the black really does make a difference, doesn't it? Now I cut a white card base and this is a five by seven card base. And if you wanna know the, the way to cut it, I mean, I, I initially was like, oh my gosh, can I get that out of an eight and a half by 11? Yes, you can, of course you can. You wanna cut it on that 11 inch side, you know? You wanna cut this down to, you want this, let's see, I'm gonna show you. I think it's easier to show you than to tell you. Let's cut a panel together for a five by seven card. I'll back out a little bit. Okay, and I am gonna do a white card base because of all that color, I don't want it to be um, blocked by anything. So you wanna go to 10 inches. This is your eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. 10 inches by seven inches. And then you can keep these pieces for other things, die cuts, anything else that you need to cut out. And then you're going to score it on the, on this side right here, but you can see it's gonna, the, it goes past seven inches or it goes down to seven inches here. So it's really close to the edge. So what I do is I just go to the five inch mark and I score it about halfway down a couple times and then I flip it and I score it the other way, the five inch mark a couple of times, fold it in half, and then I use the back of the tool just to press that down. That's a big card. We love our big cards though. Okay. So now this panel is going to go right on top and you see I love that big wide frame, but I think it makes it even more special to have that extra frame that we created with the masking magic. Now I really do feel like a black greeting would work really well, but I also think a black outline would work really well and we could do a little ink blending on the greeting itself. So let's try that and see how we like it. And if we don't like it, we can go back and do something different. But I'm thinking that we could do two different colors. Maybe we could do red and pink. I don't know. I do kind of think black would do it. I actually think even stamping a greeting right on there might be the, the ticket, you know, like maybe one of these from Arjita's new set, you know, just having a, a greeting just stamped right on there. I love this one. Spring blessing. Oh, spring blessings. Isn't that the perfect greeting for a big card like this with all Yes, let's do that. Let's, let's, I know, you know, you gotta, I'm telling you, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I get here. I know a little sometimes, but sometimes knowing a little is just enough to be dangerous. So I'm gonna use, this is, um, oh, I gotta find the insert for this, this stamp set. Who can tell me the name of the stamp set? You are my world, sorry. It's right here too. You are my world. And I'm gonna do the spring blessings because I think that all the flowers there make it very obviously a very bright, fun spring card. And we'll cut it out with the coordinating die set too. And that'll make it pop up a little bit more. So let me find my Misty in my mess. And I just, this was one of the pieces that I just cut off of that cardstock. We'll just pop that on there and we'll cut, the, we'll stamp that in black. Gotta have a little bit more black on this card. I wonder if this is gonna be big enough to die cut. I think I'll use a little bit of a bigger piece. I don't wanna take a shot here. Here's a weird piece of cardstock that has a fold in it. I'll just use this. Oh, I don't want to get ink on that. So I'm gonna use black onyx.
I was going to stamp it directly on there, but I think die cutting it gives me the opportunity to pop it up a little bit. And since I made my last card, um, I don't think I cleaned this stamp. So, <laughs> all right. And then I think my stamp might have a tiny little flaw in it. But I never mind that. I don't freak out about that because it's so easy to just take a blending stump. I'll show you. Let's zoom in real tight here so you can see this. I'm going to zoom in really tight. <laughs> so you see that right there, that little white spot? So I'm just going to take a blending stump. I'm going to add a little bit of black onto the blending stump, and then I'm just going to touch it a little bit to that little spot. And then it disappears. See that? That looks pretty good. Usually I use a sharper blending stump, but I don't worry about a tiny thing like that. It's so easy to fix, and it's probably just because I have something on the stamp and I just have to pick it off. But I get nervous. I Cynthia just said she's not a big fan of stamping directly on the card. You know, I get a little nervous when I've put that much work into the card. Stamping directly on the card does give me a little bit of pause. So by, you know... By stamping it and die cutting it, I think it's going to be a little a little better. And last time I used this, I need to just cut this a little smaller. But last time I used this die, I found it to be a little tricky. And then I threw away my template that I made. So I'm going to make another one real quick. This is really close. Look at my fingernails, really close. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Okay. So I'm going to get my intricut die cutting machine. By the way, for those of you who have been waiting for the intricut, it did come back into stock, but we're actually down to, I think, the last 200 machines. It really did sell quickly, but it didn't sell out like in a minute, which I was really happy about because nothing's worse than getting your email the next morning and finding out that you missed it. So I was really glad that at least, you know, people had a little bit of a chance. So I'm going to just cut a template out of, that has glue all over it. That's all right. I'm going to cut a template out of this little piece of green that was just laying there. Okay. And then what I'm trying to do is line up this sentiment, but there are a lot of openings in this die. So in order to get all those openings like that, they have to put these little crossbars in in different places. And it does make it a little bit difficult like to see exactly where to line it up. You know, I don't like not being able to see under there and I don't like this. So I just make a template. So what I did was I cut this out and then I'm just gonna cut this off cause it's gonna get in the way. I love that hack, Gina, too. <laughs> it's a, it, is, it is a good hack. I know exactly what you meant. <laughs> Pay no mind to the man behind the controls over there. <laughs> You're going to pay for that. Okay, so I'm, I'm making sure that the white looks pretty even all around, right? And then I'm just going to tape that down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then we'll just pop this into place until we feel it snap. And once you feel it snap into place, then sometimes I'll use like some masking magic to tack it down just because, I don't know, I, I'm always worried that it will tear the paper if it gets stuck to the, to the die cut. I mean to the paper itself, the image, and masking magic won't. Okay. So now we know that's in the right spot. <laughs> and then hopefully that worked. We'll see. Look at that. Yes. Perfectly centered. I love that. Okay.
Now remember though, when you have this all taped up onto this template, don't throw your die away. Put your die, and you can keep this template and use it over and over again. I'm gonna keep this one this time. I'll put it over here with the die. Then you could just keep it with your stamp set and um, you know, you can use it every time. Alrighty. Now let's see how we're going to position this. Here's the card again. We'll zoom in a bit. And then I'm just thinking it could go right in here like that. I think that's a really nice spot and I think I'll put a couple little embellishments in there. Now I'd like to pop that up. So I am gonna use some of the quarter inch foam squares and I always just cut a little row of them to make them skinnier. This way we can get them into some of the skinnier spots on here. Let's see, just put a few of them on the back here. This is nice. I hear the rain out there. It's raining really hard here. And um, I don't know, there's something so peaceful about crafting when it's raining. It's like you, you don't feel like, sometimes in the summer I struggle because especially up here in Wisconsin, the summers are so short that when you have a nice day and you're not outside, you feel guilty. You feel like, oh, I should be outside. Um, and there's something nice about just a rainy day that allows you to just feel like, oh, I'm gonna get my coffee and I'm gonna settle in and I'm gonna make some cards. I love that. Doesn't that sound good? I'm just putting a lot of these little foam squares on here. I feel like I should put one up there, but I probably won't need it. Okay, and I gotta peel all these off. And then I gotta find my reverse tweezers. And those came back in stock today as well. These have been out of stock for a while and these are back in stock now, our little Gina K Designs reverse tweezers. They're really nice. There's, you know what I find too? Whenever you tie a bow, these reverse tweezers are great for that because you can, you know, do the tight part of the bow where you have to like pull it tight and then you don't have to like find somebody to like put their finger there and hold it down. You can just hold it down by using the reverse tweezer and squeezing it and then just lay it down and it holds it in place. And I love that. Okay, let's see where we want this. I think right right there is going to be good. We'll still see them a lot of the poppies. And um, I think that's good. I think that's a good spot for it. Okay. Then we'll add just a few little embellishments. And I'm not even sure what I want to add yet, or even if I want to add them. So I'm going to, I'm thinking maybe just some sequins like these, cause I don't want it to really be in the way of the design. Like, I don't know that we need color. I don't think we need pearls or anything like that. Just maybe a few little sequins. Let's just place a couple and see how it looks. That's backwards. That's better. You know, just a couple sprinkled here and there. Maybe two little ones. Go there and maybe one more down here. Kind of focusing on just surrounding the, uh, the greeting. I think we'll do that. We'll do five, that's a nice even number. And for design purposes, those, I'm sorry, a nice odd number, oh my gosh, even numbers I guess aren't as eye appealing as an odd number. I guess that is true. We're gonna go with it. All right, so we'll just put a little sequin there, one there. I'm not good with my left hand. 
And I don't even like really doing it this way because I do like to let the glue dry till it's a little tacky before I add the sequins, but I don't want to lose the placing, so I'm going to muscle through it. Oh, that's way too much glue. One there, and then this little one down here. It's a little hard to see the sequins in the bright light, but I will move the card around so hopefully they'll sparkle a little bit. But it's always nice to have a little bit of shimmer on your card, and these disco ball sequins are really fun for that. Let me burp my bottle, tap it down and burp it. Clean off the lid. Okay. So, let's back out just a bit. It's pretty close. I know some of you watch on a giant TV, so somebody said in the group, I'm always so disappointed when I get my stamps that they're so much smaller than I thought they were going to be because they watch on like a 72-inch TV. <laughs> okay, and you can see that little bit of sparkle in there. Hopefully you can see that. But there we go. So what do you think? Do you like this idea of mixing all the different flower stencils together to create your own spring garden? Wow. I love that. Did I put this on crooked? Oh, that's all right. There we go. Just push that up. There we go. Straight. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? That is such a refreshing card. Yeah. So, so it. springy. Yeah. <laughs> Love. All right. Well, Tom, we are going to give away a gift card tonight. Let's give it. We're going to give a $15 gift card. And if you're new here, the way to enter to win, I probably should have said this at the beginning, so I apologize, but it's just to leave a comment. Once you leave a comment, your comment is an entry and we are going to choose a winner. Tom's going to spin his magic wheel back there and he is going to pick a winner. So let's do it. Here it goes. The winner tonight is Rochelle Lee. Rochelle Lee. Yay! Yay. Hey, Rochelle, congratulations. All you have to do is send your name and what email address you want to use to info at ginakdesigns.com and we will send you a digital gift card for $15. You can use it anytime you want. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun. I'm going to take some high quality photos of this card and put them in our Facebook group and also on our YouTube community tab. <laughs> yes, Tom, we know. <laughs> And then, again, we are so sorry that we're not going to be able to be with you on Thursday, but we will be back next Tuesday with another Stampin' Chat Live. So until then, everybody, stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.